So a couple of weeks ago, we had talked about splitterators. I'd given you an overview of what splitterators were. What we're going to do today is we're going to talk about how to apply splitterators so you get a better sense of how they work. And we'll talk about them in the context of the simple search stream program, which we've been using to motivate a lot of the features in Java 8 streams. And in particular, we're going to talk about the search for word method, which is being used here as a method reference as a behavior for the map aggregate operation. So this is a so-called sequential splitterator. We'll talk later in the course about parallel splitterators. You'll get more chance to learn about those in the upcoming sessions. And uh, the particular part here is this search for word method. What the search for word method does is it uses a splitterator to find all instances of a word in the input, the input being the set of uh, lyrics from the Do Re Mi song, and it returns a list of all the corresponding search results. So whenever there's a match, you'll get back a uh, search result object that comes back as a list. So you can see that search for word takes a word, and it makes a new search results object that includes the word plus some other stuff I don't show here. And what it does is it goes ahead and uses something called stream support.stream. Stream support.stream is a factory method that takes a splitterator and a Boolean and it goes ahead and will essentially create a splitterator, which in this case is going to be, the, be created by the word match splitterator. We'll talk about word match splitterator in a second. Word match splitterator is going to take the input, which is the content of the file, and a given word we're looking for. And in this particular case, it's going to use the uh, false parameter here. Let's see if I say that somewhere else. Oops, I guess not. Um, we put false here, and what false basically says is make this a sequential splitterator. Had we put true here, we would have gotten a parallel splitterator. And we'll talk about the difference between sequential splitterators and parallel splitterators shortly. What we get back is a stream, which will be a stream of uh, result objects. We'll talk about result objects in a second. And what we're going to do is we're going to collect all those result objects together into a list. So we're going to end up with a list of search results dot result objects. And at a high level, what that's doing is that's keeping track of all the indices where things were actually found. OK, so this is the word match splitterator class. As you can see, it extends the splitterators dot abstract splitterator class. This is a, a class that fills in some of the details of a splitterator to make it easier for you to do the implementation. You only have to implement a few of the methods, not all of them. <clears throat> There's a bunch of methods to find in the splitterator interface that have canonical implementations through the abstract splitterator class. And what word match splitterator is going to do is it's going to use a Java regular expression to create a stream of search result, result objects that will keep track of the number of times a word appears in an input string. So we'll kind of work, walk through this, and I'll show you how it works. So first of all, um, this word matcher is part of the regular expressions package in Java. And so if you're familiar with regular expressions, you can give a regular expression, which is a pattern matching mechanism. And so everything that matches the regular expression will come back out of this regular expression matcher that we're about to look at. So as you can see here, we have the word match splitterator constructor. It takes the input string and the word that we're looking for at a given time, like the word do or re or me, and the input string is the lyrics for the song. And then it goes ahead and it makes a regular expression string. So in this particular case, we're going to take the word, we're going to trim off any leading or trailing spaces, and then we're going to bracket it with a backslash b at the beginning and a backslash b at the end. And that basically says, match this only as a word. So it won't match a substring instance of this. It'll just match it if it's truly a word. And a word is defined as <clears throat> having white space around it. So, um, or some kind of um, punctuation like a period and so on. So that's the string we create. We then go ahead and take that string and we compile it into a regular expression. You can read more about that here. We compile it. And we say we want to make it case insensitive. All that means is that it'll match whether it's capital DO versus lowercase DO. It'll both match 
the same way. And then we take that compiled regular expression and we associate it with the input string and we create a matcher for that. So M word matcher is a matcher. And a matcher is, again, a feature that's provided with Java and uh, the Java regular expression library. OK, so given that matcher, the matcher is compiled for the regular expression, which comes from the string associated with the, the input, that will go ahead and be used during the splitteration process. And since this is a sequential splitterator, there's only one method that actually matters here, and that's the try advance method. And the try advance method is a method that's defined, of course, in the splitterator interface. And that's called by the Java 8 streams framework to attempt to advance the splitterator by one word match. So this is what's going to be called under the hood by the stream support dot stream method. It's going to end up setting things up so it's going to call try advance to see if it can split the stream up into chunks. And uh, when you wrote your splitterator for assignment, uh, 2A, I think it was, this is what will be used when we do this stuff in the subsequent program. So in this particular case, uh, what we do first here is we are passed in an action, which is a consumer. Remember, consumers have this ability to accept something. They, they uh, have no output. They just take something in. And we use this consumer action to pass results back, if there are any results, if try advance returns true back to the streams framework. And you'll see how that works in just a second. So the first thing that try advance does is it says, are there any matches of this regular expression left in the input? And if find returns false, then that means there's nothing to be found. So we're all done. So if find returns false, so if not find, then we return false. And that basically informs the stream framework. We're done. No more matches and stop trying to call try advance. Conversely, if find returns true, that meant there was a match. And the regular expression matcher keeps track of the start location, the starting index, with this start method here. So if we've had a find, if, we've, if find returns true, that means that we found what we're looking for. And the index of the match starts here at whatever the start method returns. So we take that index, which might be you know, 75 or 230 or whatever, and we make a new result object, because you can see this is a consumer of results. We make a new results object that keeps track of where the index is, and then we accept that into the consumer action. So this is basically kind of passing by reference. We're updating the action that gets sent back into the uh, streams framework. And the last thing we do here is we return true. And that said, we got something. So streams framework, please try calling try advance again. And that'll keep happening until it returns false, which would mean that we have consumed all the matches in the input string that match the regular expression. So that's a very cool little example of how to use a uh, regular expression to do pattern matching and how to use regular expression pattern matcher in order to implement the try advance method of a splitterator. So as you can see here, this creates the sequential stream via the word match splitterator class. And it's sequential again because we put a false here. And then that'll be collected into the list. So we'll end up with a list of these result objects. This is basically where this occurs in the overall visualization of the program. So you can see we make a stream of the search words. We search for each word in the input string. That will come back. As you can see here, we have a stream of strings. That will return a stream of search results. And what we'll do next, of course, is get rid of anything that didn't find a match. And then we'll collect that all up into a list. That's kind of where that occurs here. So that's an overview about how splitterators get applied. The cool part is you, as an application developer, don't really have to know the details of how Streams creates the splitterator and uses it. You, as an application developer, just know how, have to know how to make the right splitterator. And oftentimes, you make your splitterator by simply using the uh, splitterator method that's defined on all the Java collections. But in this particular case, we didn't have a Java collection that would do what we wanted to. 
So we ended up making our own splitterator, the word match splitterator, in order to be able to search in that string and find all the matches. Okay, so that's a quick overview of how to apply splitterator.